Hi everyone, this is Ananya and with us today we have Mr. Rajesh Talwar, an author well known for his books. Today we are going to talk with him about his book on the murder of Arushi Talwar and Hem Raj. So, we are glad to have you here. To start off, we need to ask you, how did you come up with the idea of writing this book? Uh, actually, I had uh, I write a lot of books and many of my books are on, are on legal issues. Uh, so, in a way it was natural for me to think of Arushi, writing a book on Arushi. Uh, but I did not uh, think very hard of it uh, because of uh, several reasons. Firstly, uh, to write a book on Arushi I would have had to go to the court, watch the hearings, uh, read everything in detail. And since I work overseas, this wasn't really possible. The second thing is that, uh, like many other people, like most middle class people, I assumed that the Arushi case, the Talwars would get justice. Uh, why? Because I thought, well, they have the money. Uh, if anybody doesn't have money, it's the servants. So the Arushi case, I was confident that they will get justice. Now, but what changed my mind, uh, in 2015, I was going to Bangkok for a conference and I stopped over in Delhi uh, in transit and I picked up a copy of Avirukh Sen's book. So I read it on the flight and uh, then when I reached my hotel in Bangkok, I kept reading it through the night because it was so shocking for me. Uh, it was uh, uh, terribly disturbing. And then I realized that uh, I had made a mistake in assuming that the Talwars got justice just because they had money. Uh, because uh, uh, they did not get justice by any stretch of imagination. On my way back from Bangkok, I stopped in Delhi for two, three days to visit my parents in Noida. Uh, and there, uh, I uh, happened to, this movie was running, the Arushi movie. So I went to see the movie. And my initial fears were deepened after I saw the movie because I thought, my God. So I guess the question that everybody wants to know is how is your book different from Aviruk Sen's book? After reading Sen's book, uh, which is a brilliant book, uh, I found that, that there was one thing which I was not very happy with. And, uh, and that is that somewhere in the book, uh, uh, Sen uh, seems to suggest that it was more likely that the servants had committed the crime. He does it not in very crude terms, but it's just implied in the way he writes it out. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but I think he needed to spell out uh, the legal requirements for convicting somebody. Uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, really is the difference between his book and mine. His book has been written from a journalist's perspective, whereas mine has been written from a uh, uh, well, a combination of lawyer and concerned citizen perspective because I try to make it as reader friendly as possible. Uh, I'd like to talk about what is the law on the, of the land in India and all over the civilized world. Uh, and that is that uh, uh, in order to, before you can convict somebody of a crime as a serious crime like murder or any other serious crime, you have to prove your case beyond all reasonable doubt. So that is the uh, basic premise. And uh, in this case, there was no case produced, um, proved beyond reasonable doubt either against the Talwas or against the servants. And uh, so I think this needed to be said at the outset in uh, both the book and the movie. Uh, what the uh, servant said under the truth serum, uh, that has been given undue importance both in the book and the movie because the case was never proved against either of them. And uh, this brings me to also a question which is currently circulating in the media which is that well if these people didn't do it, if the Talwas didn't do it, then who did it? So I think uh, in the movie also at the outside as well as in the book, at the outside if it had been made clear that we are of the opinion, as far as uh, Menga Guzar is concerned for the movie or Aviruk Sen in the book, that there was no case 
either against the talwars or against the servants and uh, therefore neither of them should be acquitted so uh, uh, so these were my motivations i thought i need to write about this uh, the other thing is that uh, avirup in his book he discusses the judgment very uh, sketchily uh, because uh, he's a journalist he doesn't want to get in trouble with the law although he's been very brave in you know unearthing these facts but he may not he doesn't have a legal background i have a legal background i can so i read the judgment and i saw so many 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 things wrong with the judgment that i felt impelled that i have to write something i have to bring justice uh, in this case uh, i owe it uh, aside from the fact of course that he is my namesake all right so why do you think that they were innocent even before the judgment of the high court um and then yeah after i read the judgment and uh, you know saw the movie uh, checked all the other information which was available on the net and uh, there was no doubt in my mind that these are innocent people the talwars have been framed in this case uh, and there are so many reasons which uh, somebody would actually have to buy the book uh, because it's reason after reason why i'm giving why they were clearly innocent uh, but uh, uh people were not li- willing to listen to me either as uh, they were uh, and this st- there are people still who are not willing to uh, listen to the high court firstly uh, arushi's mother nupur talwar the day before they had a few days earlier they had bought a camera for their daughter and uh, this camera the night before the incident arushi took some photographs from it and in the photograph rajesh talwar is wearing a red t-shirt and uh, nupur is wearing a night dress okay when the police found this camera uh, they found that some photographs had been deleted okay so now they want to fix somebody they say oh this is very suspicious you know she took photographs but some photographs were deleted why were they deleted and the mother said very obviously anybody who's taking cameras there are pictures which you don't like so you delete them right now you're interviewing me and uh, i've seen you delete three four photographs because you don't like them so arushi deleted photographs is the most natural thing for a photographer to do that becomes a no no this is suspicious uh, so it was a most natural thing but in that photograph now this is photograph photographic evidence of nupur talwar's innocence because she's wearing a night dress and the next morning she is wearing the same night dress but the night dress is uh, it doesn't have all that blood on it so a question was put to the judge that look she was wearing a night dress and this is the same night dress and the night dress is not showing that she is a, a killer uh, but the judge in his judgment he writes oh but she might have changed her night dress to something else and then killed the daughter and then changed back into the night dress well nupur talwar she was a hard working doctor she was not a fashion model and even fashion models when they put on a night dress they don't go and change it to another night dress so why should you assume that she changed it changed before sleeping i mean she's wearing a night dress it's the most natural thing for you to assume is that she would be sleeping in that night dress and then the morning it's actually a photographic evidence of her innocence in my view uh, i'll give you two other examples uh, when uh, the maid came in nupur talwar start telephone the servant emraj according to police records the phone was ringing somewhere okay so if nupur and rajesh had killed the servant the phone would have been in the house only were they so foolish that they would not you know switch off the phone okay the police record show that when she rang the phone rang for a few minutes and then it was switched off so my question is this also for me shows a innocence because where was the phone was the phone in the flat so nupur was ringing the phone and rajesh talwar was in another room holding the phone which he switched off that is so stupid how could they be so stupid why would they do it 
like that. So the phone was tracked out to somewhere else in Noida. That was tracking was done. But the technology was not so advanced to say that where was the phone exactly. Now, uh, uh, I do a lot of, uh, you know, criminal work as well in my work with the United Nations. And, uh, and generally, you know, that GPS technologies are so advanced. They are kidnapping cases. A girl gets kidnapped and then she is, you know, put into the trunk of a car. But her mobile is there and the police can zero in into where is the car, where is the signal coming from. They can find exactly the same place. So if the Talwars, did they know the GPS tracking possibilities of the Noida police of the CBI? How did they know that if the phone was in the apartment, that they would not be able to zoom in exactly, you know, that the phone was being, Nupur was talking to a phone which was located within the Talwar flat. So it's very clear that, uh, you know, uh, it was somewhere else in Noida. Uh, if the technology had been advanced and they said, no, no, it was in the flat only, that would have been a kind of conclusive proof that, okay, the Talwars are guilty. But, uh, so this is, I give you the second example. I give you a third example. The, uh, there was a palm print. Himrad's body was found on the terrace. There was a bloody palm print on the wall. And the bloody palm print was never matched with Rajesh Talwar because, I mean, of course, the UP police was in a mess, the CBI investigation was in a mess. The first CBI investigator, in fact, said that what happened is it rained after a few days, so that got washed away to some extent. But according to him, and he's right, the comparison still could have been done because traces remain. You know, even if the rain comes, they still. Uh, if you see through a certain kind of lens, forensic lens, you still find signs. But the hand was never matched with Rajesh Talwar's foot, handprint. Why? I mean, uh, uh, it makes me feel that it was never matched because they thought it's not going to be a match. And then if it's not a match, then it becomes a question, why are we getting Rajesh Talwar convicted? And uh, there is this bottle of whiskey which is found somewhere on which there are fingerprints which cannot be tallied with anybody. So the question is, okay, Rajesh Talwar was drinking, you know, but his fingerprints were not found. Whose fingerprints did Rajesh Talwar put? How could a bottle in his house, how could he put somebody else's fingerprints on them? So the case was full of all these kind of inconsistencies. There, I mean, reason after reason, why it was clearly uh, fabricated, uh, I mean, clearly they were innocent. Uh, the first IO also made a good good point. He said, the first investigation officer, he said he believed they were innocent. And this is not an ordinary investigating officer. This is a guy who handled the Telgi scam, running into, you know, uh, hundreds of crores. He was doing major investigations. This was a small thing for him. A man of his experience, of his alertness, when he feels that the Talwas were innocent, that has something to be, you know, you have to give credence to it. You have to give some. So, uh, actually, at the face of it, I think if one CBI investigator is convinced that this is a frame up, that the Talwas were innocent, this itself, the issue of reasonable doubt, you know, you, can, you just throw it out. How can, you, how can there not be reasonable doubt if the main investigator feels that these are innocent people? who've gone through all the investigation. The medical, the medical was such a washout. The kind of evidence that was given. There was this doctor who came in and who said, uh, you know, they said, well, how do you think that uh, they were having sex? And he said, the, the penis was swollen. And they said, how do you know this? He said, oh, it's because uh, I know it from my, my experience with my wife. My God, what are you talking about? Your experience with your wife, you're, you're deposing as a doctor and you're talking about your experiences with your wife. So what he's saying is really is that whenever there's sex, it takes some time for the penis to get flaccid again. So, you know, so he's using that as an indication. And then you have a qualified doctor who comes in and says that no, there are other medical reasons why this could have happened. It's very normal when the body has been in a certain condition in, a, in a, a hot atmosphere, this kind of thing can happen. But that opinion is ignored and you have this loser, this idiot, 
who is who's talking about you know uh, his, the experience with his wife.